This week on The Wire, gearing changes unpopular, image holding us back financially, and more cuts to home loans. Before we get into it, what is The Wire? The Wire stands for The Week in Real Estate. This is where we cover all the top stories happening from The Week in Money, Finance, Real Estate, and Investment. Before we get into the top stories this week, and ultimately it's so you can keep your finger on the pulse and stay ahead of the pack. But before we get into it, let me introduce myself, guys. My name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator, managing director of Infinite Wealth. We love to see your interaction with these posts, so please like, love, angry, comment, question. We've got our Just Ask Tim video series that happens every week as well. So if you want to get one of your own personal questions answered, send it through on one of our social media channels. And if I don't answer it live for you, I'll always make sure that one of our team get back to you. But um, last thing I'll ask you to do, of course, being that we're on the social media platforms, guys, is if uh, we do ask that you please share this information, this valuable information with your friends and family so that they can get the benefit uh, uh, as well. But apart from that, guys, let's get stuck into the top stories happening this week. So gearing reform unpopular. So a new survey shows that most Australians don't understand the federal opposition's real estate policy or how it could impact them. So the report from JWS Research says that 66% of Australians, and that was polled from all age groups, political persuasions and socioeconomic backgrounds, do not understand Labor's proposed reforms to negative gearing and capital gains tax, while 34% were aware and understand the policy, but only at some level. Now further, 52% believe that rents will go up and 74% believe there needs to be a review of this policy before it gets implemented. And that's of course if Labor get in, of course they gotta get it through the Senate as well, which is gonna be what's actually probably the toughest part. We've always said that changes to negative gearing and capital gains tax uh, for housing are bad policy, and that comes from Graham Wolf, who's the managing director of the Housing Industry Association. One thing that's really interesting to note, guys, if it was true what Labor was saying, that this policy is going to result in new homes being built, then the Housing Industry Association and the Master Builders Association would be supporting it. That's what they do, build new homes. But notice how they're not supporting it. So that's something very interesting to note. Okay. Um, the research confirms how unpopular these changes are across all political persuasions, and twice as many voters oppose them, uh, oppose these changes uh, as compared to support them. So when Australians vote at the upcoming election in May, Wolf says that most people are being asked to consider a key policy without really properly understanding it and its impact. And I think this is going to be one of those issues that's really going to probably turn the election. So really good points there from uh, Mr. Wolf, right? But let's get on to our second top story, image holding us back financially. So new research has found that 35% of Australians uh, feel pressured to keep up appearances and maintain a certain lifestyle. Mortgage Choice and Core Data's financial fitness white paper explored Australians' attitudes and behaviours towards their finances. The Mortgage Choice Chief Executive Officer, Susan Mitchell, says that we found that Australians are feeling pressured to keep up appearances in order to maintain their lifestyle, which of course can come at a cost to their financial goals and their health and wellbeing. Now, re research revealed that 38% of Australians ch are choosing to forego buying a home, uh, buying their own home in order to keep up appearances. Okay, while 35% of respondents said they felt pressure to keep up appearances, what was really alarming was this surged to almost 50% among respondents aged 30 years and younger. In contrast, only 20% of Australians aged between 51 and 60 felt pressured to keep up their appearances. Okay, so interesting news coming there. Now, more cuts to home loan rates. So the Commonwealth Bank has reduced its interest rates on fixed rate loans for homeowners and investors. So this is in line with a lot of other banks really starting to opening up their book and get competitive in the investor space. These cuts apply to a range of fixed rate loans. Well, we've got some soaring going on in the background. Fixed rate loans with the biggest cut of 0.3 percentage points to its five-year owner-occupied line to a new rate of 4.09%. The changes by Commonwealth Bank are further proof that lenders are desperate to lock in new customers, and that's what Sally Tinder, the research director at Comparison Site Rate City, said. This follows earlier moves by ANZ to drop its interest rates on fixed rate home loans, and Tyndall says that about 40 lenders have now dropped rates on more than 400 fixed rate home loans since the beginning of this year. So once again, certainly more indications that it's getting more competitive in the home loan space. Banks are trying to get new customers and they're also getting more competitive when it comes to investors. Not only that, but Bendigo and Adelaide Bank are cutting their interest rates on two of their home loan products as well. The bank said standard variable interest rates will decrease on its basic home loan products and its online Bendigo Express home loan. Bendigo is reducing the variable interest rate on its Express, Express home loan by 10 basis points to 3.79. So this is very common right now. A lot of lenders are showing us interest rates under 4%. If you're not paying under 4%, maybe you should be talking to our team, uh, regardless of whether we're talking owner-occupied or uh, investor loans. 
Okay, so while the basic home loan sees a cut of 20 basis points to 3.79%, these reductions relate to owner-occupied loans where the borrower is paying principal and interest. Look, most of the owner-occupied loans, you certainly should be able to get below 4% right now. Some investor loans, probably talking just a fraction over 4%, but if you're certainly not paying those rates, and a lot of people aren't, you want to speak to our team. But guys, like I said, that covers all the top stories happening from the week in real estate. This week, we love to see your interaction with these posts, so please like, love, angry, question, comment. We've got our Just Ask Tim video series as well. Please share this with your friends and family on social media as well so they can get the value of this information. And apart from that, guys, have a great weekend. I look forward to speaking to you early in the week. Good night.